Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. It's, it's been a couple weeks. I've been a little bit busy. I was traveling last week for work, which is why Steinbeck hasn't seen me in a week. And boy, oh boy, was he obnoxious when I got home last night. Yes, you were. So, uh, at any rate, I had the, like I said, I had the opportunity to travel last week, which is why I don't have a beard right now. When I, here in the US, um, people are pretty much returning to normal whether that's a good idea or not totally depends on which state you live in um, Colorado's doing really well where I live uh, the East Coast where I was at is mixed depends on the specific area um, but flying we're still required to wear masks now interestingly when I flew out of Denver they just said, wear a face covering. So I just wore a bandana and, and I also shaved my beard so I can wear an N95 mask um, as well when I fly. So I had the bandana on in the airport and could have worn that for the flight. But um, in a pressurized cabin full of people from who knows where with what, who knows what vaccination status, of course, uh, I'm gonna wear an N95 mask. So, um, and for those of you curious, I use Demotech Made in USA N95 masks. They're really easy to get. Uh, at least they were when I bought mine a couple months ago. So, um, tangent. Let's get back on on subject. So, we're all we're getting to a point with this, by the way. Um, so, uh, so flew out there, and and uh, had the opportunity while I was there to go to a hockey game with a bunch of friends. Now I haven't been to an NHL game in. years decades literal decades last last game i went to was 15 years ago it was a chicago wolves game i don't think that's nhl uh i've been to some blackhawks games as a kid but not i think probably 30 32 years ago was the last time i went to a blackhawks game so so uh i was invited to go see an nhl game i'm like yes let's do that that is going to be a lot of fun so we did and there was lots of food and it was great and one of the rules that the stadium had was that nothing bigger than a cell phone could be brought in why i'm using a visual aid i don't know you guys know what cell phones are so so we're sitting up there and we're we're halfway up the rows in the uh, stadium and, and i have my cell phone and was able to get shots of the entire rink uh we we got there early enough there weren't people out there yet but i just figured oh this will be fun for the memory so i got a few shots of the, of the entire rink and um uh they fit into the frame on the image quite nicely which should tell you fairly uh, a lot of information about how far back we were but it was tons of fun you go for the friends and to see the game it's a very good game and uh but but i was thinking Everyone there is shooting with cell phones. Like I, last time I went to a major sporting event was a handful of years ago. I went to a Giants game with my brother, and this is six, seven years ago. And uh, I went to a, my wife took me to a Raiders game shortly before we moved to California, moved from there. And both of them allowed full size cameras with lenses up to 300 millimeters. But the hockey game was not that way. So I started thinking about there's been a lot of things that have changed, but I started thinking about what could be different for cell phones that would make them... Okay, so we know cell phones have been replacing DSLRs, well, point and shoots, primarily. They've eradicated that market almost entirely. And that uh, mirrorless cameras are replacing DSLRs, but I started thinking about what would make cell phones a competitor for mirrorless cameras and DSLRs. What, what would make them the mode of, uh, of photography? And I, I hope that cell phone makers don't take this as advice to do any of this because this is just a thought experiment. So, so, then the, the, so the questions are, what are the differences between an interchangeable lens camera and a cell phone? 
And the biggest thing is going to be, of course, the lens and the optical zoom. That's something that cell phones will struggle with for probably a very long time. There is, there are some, I think, that have optical zooms in them and different different camera modules to kind of replace that a bit. Like my, my 5G Ace here has three cameras, a, a standard, one of them is a standard, a macro, and then a, an ultra wide, which is half the focal length of the standard. And one of those three cameras is worth using. And, um, but, but it's gonna be very hard for cell phones to replicate the way that an optical lens works, like a, going from a, an 18 millimeter to a 200, right? You can do that with digital zoom and lose all of your resolution, or if you have an interchangeable lens, you can put a different lens on and retain your full sensor resolution. But there is one thing I think that cell phones could do that would make a really significant uh, dent into the full, the, the interchangeable lens camera market. And I know there are some apps for Android at least that allow this, but um, being able to get raw files off of your cell phone would be a, uh, and I think some also some of the very high end cameras, like I think maybe the Xperia 1.3 don't quote me on that, because uh, that camera's way out of my price range, and I didn't look that deep into everything it can do, but I, I recall reading that it allows photographers to access the raw data from the images. And it got me thinking that if cell phones allowed photographers to save raw files, that would give them a substantial leg up on one of the major benefits of editing photos in post with a an interchangeable lens camera. So if I could take the raw files from my cell phone, and if it had a good dynamic range like my A7S II or K1 or the mirrorless camera that I plan to buy in the next year or so will have, then um, that would make it a very powerful photographic tool. So were I making cell phones, I think that's something I would do. And honestly, I think that is a good move for photographers as well because someone who can learn to edit in raw without making the investment of a of a, an interchangeable lens camera system would really set themselves up to move well into an interchangeable lens system when they upgraded to that because there are other advantages of course that an interchangeable lens system will always have over cell phones and another major one is sensor size and the way that a larger sensor absorbs more light, has larger glass optics in front of it, which gives you a better out of focus area rendering and uh, more flexibility in terms of focal length, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I guess maybe the point of this would be that if I were in charge of a cell phone company, I would absolutely, because personally I have a commitment to seeing the photographic community grow, want to have access for my cell phones, uh, for my cell phone photographers to be able to use raw files from their cell phones. Another advantage to that would be, like for instance, Motorola, for some reason I am not going to understand in this lifetime, is marketing their cameras as a big selling point of their, of their phones. And uh, I have I have used Motorola phones exclusively since the, since the X Pure came out in nine years ago. I, I tried counting up all the Motorola phones I've had since then. I don't remember. The Z4 was the best of them by far and away. It's the only one I've used that I thought also had a really stunning camera. Um, why anyone would market the 5G Aces camera as a selling point? That would be like marketing a dude ranch and selling a mule kick to the to the groin is a selling point. That's an exaggeration and not fair to say. Anyway, um, uh, I am not thrilled with this cam with this phone's cameras or with any of the other non super super high end Motorola phones. That said, if I could use that camera to get the raw data off of and edit it in post and then share it, that would go a long way to making the cameras appear to work better than they do straight out of post. And as a marketing tactic if uh, if I were a marketing executive at one of these cell phone companies I would say yo technical team give my phones 
the ability for photographers who are interested in it to shoot in RAW rather than in JPEG. And, or, or even if that means they're not gonna get burst mode or whatever compromises we have to make, because the really serious photographers who want to shoot in RAW can then edit it in whatever software they want. And that's going to, and anytime they share something and if they, they, they tag our photo in their Instagram or Twitter or whatever they're sharing it on, it's going to make our photos from our cameras on our phones look way, way, way better than the competition. And that's going to be an important marketing tool. So I would be uh, fighting tooth and nail for that were I a marketing executive at Motorola or in the pixel division over at Google or Apple or wherever, wherever, pick a, pick a company. So, um, so what's the point of all that? I think that a, I think that cell phone photography is, is the biggest growth market. I, th I don't think there's any arguing that cell phone photography is the biggest growth market in photography until some major, major paradigm shift comes along and changes that. And I don't know what that paradigm shift is going to be. If I did, I would be banking on it right now and dying a very, very wealthy man. But um, if the, uh, until that paradigm shift comes along, cell phone photography is really going to grow and continue to eat into the market share of all other types of photography because it is so easy for cell phone photography to be shared on all of the social meds. And uh, so, so if you want to make those images look really good, the best thing to do would be to allow photographers to shoot raw. Now, going beyond that, again, where I am a marketing executive, I would say in addition to that, I want raw editing software built into the phone so that somebody can open up their image and they can start adjusting all the different sliders for color, temperature, contrast, whites, darks. They can go in, they can adjust the, um, the curves and the hue, saturation, and, and tint of the different color channels, things like that. I would want at least something that is at least half as capable as the Adobe RAW photo editor, because then people on their phone could make those adjustments from the native RAW files on their phone and then convert those to JPEG and post them. And were I, were I again a savvy marketing guy at one of these phone makers, I would then set up the tool that I gave them to do that, to integrate with the social meds so that when they uploaded from that raw editor as a JPEG into any of their social meds, it would automatically create hashtags for and ats for my company, my company's marketing team, their model of phone and some other set parameters like that. So that anytime someone posted a photo from their phone, I would have that software coding it so that so that they would get all of those hashtags and ads done for them. And that would give my marketing team the ability to capitalize on those photos that are being posted from the phones we make. So, the, so all of that is just to say, I think that the growth area in cell phone photography, because as more places like stadiums say nothing bigger than a cell phone on you, no bags, no cameras, if it can't fit in your back pocket, you can't bring it in, then um, that's going to be the, the way that a lot of photography grows. And also for hiking, I will, I will tell you this year has been exhausting carrying cameras on my shoulder. Just last year wasn't as bad, but, but this year there have been a number of times where I've gotten halfway through a hike and I've said, I honestly wish I had only brought a cell phone because I was hurting. So, um, 14 miles, like we did out to Crystal Mill last month, carrying 19 pounds of camera gear, got old fast. Let me tell you, got old very fast, like three and a half to four miles in. Um, anyway, so, so that is what today's video is about, is where some ideas about where cell phone photography could grow and what things haven't been thought of that should be thought of by these savvy, savvy marketing guys, the cell phone makers, to increase their brand awareness and to use people's own photography as a way to market their, their tools that they're selling. So um, at any rate, Google Pixel team, if you are listening to those ideas, you, you, the 5A is going to be my next phone. I would love all of those tools on it, by the way. So um, 
have a good day, everyone. I gotta get going. It's Monday. I have other stuff to do today. Have a good week. Drop a comment. Let me know if you think that I am right or wrong or what ideas you think cell phone photographers would really benefit from built into their cell phones because I don't have all the answers and I would really like to hear what you say too. Have a good day, everybody. Oh, you're just going to nap now, huh? Okay, take a nap, pup.